What's going on everybody? It's the Bull Show, aka Aiden, and welcome back to another video. Today we've got a Chicago Bulls news and updates related video in terms of some of the injury crises that the Chicago Bulls continue to go through after their return, as well as the possibility for some players to come back very soon. We're looking at the Indiana Pacers game for that one, ladies and gentlemen. And just overall your thoughts and opinions on the situation and potential questions that could be asked of whether or not we may have came back to soon and i'll be answering that question in the comments uh or answering this question in this video and i'd love to have your answers in the comments below as well but before we get started please like and subscribe to the bull show turn notifications on and let me know in the comments below your thoughts about the situation around the chicago bulls this time around of course we continue to win which is a fantastic sight to see but obviously with the positives do come the negatives of the nba season and these are things that every team will go through including ourselves ladies and gentlemen. Now, obviously, a lot of this news will probably be well and known common knowledge at this point because I was supposed to make a video yesterday about these circumstances, but unfortunate events did occur. Maybe I'll tell you at the end of the video. I don't know. It's a pretty funny story, but nevertheless, um, I couldn't make that video. So yeah, uh, making it today, ladies and gentlemen. And there's of course updates from that rap from that uh, Houston Rockets game as well that we'll be discussing as well. The first thing to get out of the way, ladies and gentlemen, is obviously uh, the Derrick Jones Jr. injury that did occur against the Los Angeles Lakers. Unfortunately, the Lakers game was at the time a game that I didn't necessarily see a whole lot of. It was something that I openly discussed. I did end up missing some of that game, and I did miss Derrick Jones Jr.'s injury. I didn't see, I didn't notice it. I didn't see it, and um, yeah, it's one of those situations where I'm very surprised that it happened, but also I'm not so surprised that it happened. First things first, get well to Derrick Jones. Junior, obviously, it's a hamstring injury as well, very similar to Alex Crusoe, what he went through before he returned. So hopefully, this is not a serious, uh, I guess, strain on the hamstring. Hopefully, it's a mild to low level hamstring strain, and he's back within a week or a couple of weeks for the Chicago Bulls. He's a very important player, and just as much as we need all these players on this team at the moment, the last thing you want to see is injuries and players being out for a significant period of time. Thankfully, it's coming at a time where some players are going to come back, but nevertheless, He's a very important player, and you don't want to see players get injured on your team ever, so it does suck to see. And I am surprised that it happens very quickly, but also you've got to put into consideration that not many of these Chicago Bulls team or these players were training by the time we returned against the LA Lakers. I think Derek Jones Jr. came out of protocols the day before or that day of the game against the LA Lakers and pushed straight into the fire, expected to play. Now, I'm sure Derek Jones Jr. was keeping himself relatively fit in terms of protocols as much as you can do when you're isolating from everybody else. But NBA training and NBA games are significantly more, I guess, unique and also different and harder to go through than compared to just keeping yourself fit at home where you have a lot of responsibility when you're playing alongside other people and you're also training in, in a way to get ready for these games. So I'm not surprised at all that a thing like this happened for Derek Jones Jr. so quickly. But at the end of the day, I am surprised as well because we just had him come back and now he's out again. So it's like a shock factor, but also you can't be too surprised about that. So... It does begin to ask the question of whether we, or not we ended up coming back too early. And personally, I don't think we did. At the end of the day, we got a lot of players back from health and safety protocols. And that was always the biggest issue. Because when you're forcing players to sit out that may have not felt those symptoms, then you're just putting people out in protocols for no reason for many people. And when you get a certain amount of people in protocols that are just sitting there, allowed to play, they feel, they feel fit, they feel ready to play, but they can't because of certain rules and regulations. That's when I had a problem. Of course, every team will go through injuries, and those are things you can't stop. When you have certain amount of people with injuries, then at the end of the day, the rules of having eight eligible players makes the perfect sense. It's always been like that, or for at least the time that I've known about it, it's been like that when you have injuries. But protocols is a different story because there's clearly an outbreak in the team, and that rule shouldn't apply for outbreaks. So there has to be a lot more work done in that area. So I don't think we came back too early. I think we got a lot of players back from protocols, and we're going to get a lot more back very soon. So I don't feel worried. I don't feel stressed. I don't feel anxious, and I don't feel like we came back too early. I'm very happy that those two games between the Pistons and the Raptors got postponed because those were really serious games that could have potentially put other teams in danger. 
hopefully we're past that phase and we can get back to normal Bulls basketball as that we like to see it. But injuries do always play a factor in teams. And again, I don't think injuries means that we came back too early. I think we could have had an extra training session. Maybe if Derek Jones Jr. came out of protocols a day earlier, this wouldn't have happened. But at the end of the day, you can never be too sure. And you can never, um, I guess, assume things like that. I guess fate just happens in mysterious ways. Looking at the next game for the Chicago Bulls, the Houston Rockets game, we saw Alex Caruso end up getting her, I believe it's a left foot strain. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Again, I still don't know the injury. I probably should be more pre prepared coming into these videos, but nevertheless, I will be sure to let you know the exact injury if I did get it wrong. But another player that ends up having an injury that could potentially be because he was a player that also had a little bit of time off, or maybe it's just an unfortunate circumstance. He entered the game against the Houston Rockets and he didn't return. He played, I believe, five minutes or so in that game. And all I can say is it's another tough break for Alex Crusoe. Let's not forget, a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about him not being rushed back from a hamstring injury. Because at the end of the day, hamstring injuries can reoccur. Very similar situation to strains in your foot as well. They can, they can occur every so often. They can occur a lot. And if you don't treat it properly, it can come back. And it can be a lot worse than what it is now. I don't know the level of the strain. Again, I don't know if it's a serious strain, if he's out for a couple of weeks. Or it's a strain where it's a day-to-day -day situation and he could be back by the time the Indiana Pacers game comes around or maybe mid next week. I don't know that situation as of this point in time. But again, it's a really tough break for Alex Caruso and I'm sure he's going to feel frustrated just as much as Bulls fans feel frustrated for him because he did have a lot of opportunities to come back and we did end up taking our time with him and just to have another injury, a different injury occur shortly after he returned. It's a frustrating one for every team and it's a frustrating one for Alex Caruso specifically. And you know with the tenacity that he likes to play with, you know that he always brings the energy and the effort, no matter if he's playing 15 minutes or 30 minutes. He's the player that every team would love on, would love to have. And we have him and we're very lucky for that. So again, it's a very similar situation. Same with Derek Jones Jr., same with Alex Caruso. As much as we need these players to return as quickly as possible, the last thing I want to see is short-term gain when they do return and potentially be re-hurt, re-injured and out for more weeks. I'd much rather they take their time, heal to get to 100%, allow us to play this Toronto Raptors game, win or lose, we will have a lot more players come back by the Indiana Pacers and therefore we have a lot of, I guess, time on our hands to get these players to heal up and we have a lot more depth coming back and returning for this team. So hopefully we get to see those two back completely healthy, 100% healthy and ready to play for the upcoming season. That's all I could really say. The last player I want to talk about is Alfonso McKinney, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is a player that ended up getting another 10-day contract due to the hardship exemption. And at the end of the day, these are the things that we're going to be definitely seeing from Alfonso McKinney. I think there's going to be a lot more of him on this team where that came from. I know if you look at Twitter, ladies and gentlemen, and you just look at his post-game interview, you look at the stats that he had. Literally, all the comments are talking about signing this kid, ladies and gentlemen. And at the end of the day... I'm not going to be on that boat straight away. I want to see what he does against the Raptors because there will be a time where he will play against the Raptors. I want to see if the level of play we saw against Houston will be consistent. I'm not talking about 16 points. At the end of the day, that was great from Alfonso McKinney. He did a lot of great things in that game. But I don't expect 16 points off the bench from him. I just want to see... If the level of efficiency that he does when he takes certain shots is efficient, if he's impacting the game off the ball a lot more than he is on the ball as well, because he is mostly an off-ball player, I want to see more of this kid, or more of this, uh, he's 29 I think actually, so I want to see more of this player on this team and seeing what he can do for the Chicago Bulls. I just want to see a little bit more before I jump the wagon and say, let's get him on. Because as good as he is, and I do think he's better than Matt Thomas to be fair, uh, it's just a matter of whether or not we can see him consistently show out for this team. We have a lot of guards, we have a lot of wing players, and Alfonso McKinney could be seen as both in terms of playing as a forward, and he has played a guard before. So, we'll wait and see. Obviously, a Chicago native, he's a fan favorite in Chicago, and most Chicago players are. It's just the way that it is, and of course, we love to see it. So, a lot of people will jump that bandwagon straight away, will jump on that hype train and just let it flow and maybe we will get what we want and maybe Alfonso McKinney will sign for the rest of the season and we do end up waving a certain player 
but nevertheless, until that happens, I'm going to say let's wait and see. I want to see what he does against the Raptors. And if he performs well against the Raptors, then I do think I will be convinced that he should bring he should be brought in for the remainder of the season because he does provide depth. He provides good shooting. He provides an alley-oop threat. He provides just everything that you could want on the offensive end from a player off of your bench. And I think that's exactly what we need. It's just about whether or not he could do it on a certain night consistently for the Chicago Bulls. Thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Please like and subscribe if you're new. Uh, I might as well tell you the story. Again, I've told everybody uh, in terms of my friends, and it's a pretty funny story. Maybe at the time it wasn't so funny, but when I messaged, uh, did that community post talking about how I couldn't end up uh, going making the video it's actually because i was not home i actually went to travel to see the new spider-man movie and it was a great movie i'm not going to do any spoilers or anything like that but i did take public transport to go see that movie and i ended up taking public transport back home and ladies and gentlemen there was police delays for the trains and it ended up having multiple police delays we were taking buses left right and center to certain areas and i left that movie at 8 30 p.m i got home at 1 a.m and usually by the time the videos are uploaded for the Chicago Bulls, my YouTube videos at least, in Australia, they're uploaded at 2 a.m. I always make sure the videos are uploaded at 2 a.m. So I couldn't actually make that video and I couldn't actually record it in time to upload a video at 2 a.m. And usually you can schedule it a lot of hours beforehand. I could not do that because I wasn't home. I wasn't able to record. I was on a train. I was on a bus. I was in a car. I was literally everywhere. And... That's the risk of taking public transport. You just never know what's going to happen. And uh, I suffered the unfortunate fate and learning experience from that. So you live and you learn, ladies and gentlemen. You're always unlucky at times. You can never, um, you can never always be lucky and go through every certain situation with great success. There will always be things in your way. And that's the way that I see it. I, I, I couldn't make that video because of everything that was put in front of me. But we move on, ladies and gentlemen. I thought you'd like to know. At the end of the day, it's nothing serious. I know I got a lot of messages saying, I hope everything's okay. I don't see that as a serious thing that happened to me. But at the end of the day, there's just not enough time in the day to upload a video, to record it at one and upload it at two. I, I, it just, it's not possible. At least for me, it's not possible. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that's the reason. Um, if you got to the end of the video, I hope you enjoyed that story. If it was funny for you, let me know. Uh, if you feel sorry for me, I guess let me know. I don't feel sorry for me. Uh, I, it's just one of those things that just happens. Everybody else had to go through it as well. So yeah, I'll see you in the next one, ladies and gentlemen. Again, a little bit of time to open up with Aiden. Not the bull show, it's just Aiden and his life experiences. Have a wonderful and safe day. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay tuned for more. I'll see you in the next one. Take care and peace.